This is Haven Space, a safe place for fantasies. Brought to you by sex coach and researcher Sarah Perry. Hi folks, Sarah Perry here. I wanted to discuss with you a little bit about my thoughts on affairs and extramarital romances. Um, Even if they're one night stands or just casual hookups. Um, But I think that especially the psychology community, has a lot of ideas about um, the ways that affairs, the the things that trigger affairs, um, and this whole slew of motivation behind what they could be saying about your relationship deep, deep down. I've heard it said many times that if you're having an affair, or if you're romantically interested, or even sexually interested in someone else, that it means that your relationship needs some work, that you're not getting something that you need from that relationship, or perhaps that you shouldn't be together in the first place. But newsflash, people having affairs do not want to leave their marriages. That's why they're having an affair. They want to stay in their marriage. And I think that makes it really, really difficult sometimes to hear, if especially if you're the person engaged in the affair with the married partner because we have this idea that people will leave other people for you but this is actually super super uncommon nowadays it's pretty socially appropriate to just get a divorce if you're unhappy in a marriage and more so in today's society than even having affairs but if you notice Every single day, we're exposed to media about affairs and about cheating. In fact, radio shows in the morning regularly have um, roses that are being sent to someone to try to trap the other person into kind of disclosing who they're having a romantic affair with um, or a sexual affair with. And this is something that we and our kids are exposed to all of the time. We watch it um, on TV shows regularly. We even watch it in shows like The Bachelor when someone is developing emotions for one person and then someone else, but they're having this internal struggle because they're not allowed to be having emotions for many people, even though they're currently dating all of them. And that's kind of the point of the show. So we are always, always, always exposed to images of cheating and we're being trained to cheat and we're being trained to be worried about cheating, but we are not being told Um, how to kind of deal with that in a better way. Um, I was at the ASECT conference, the American Association for Sex Educators and Therapists, and there was a plenary talk, um, and I don't even remember what the talk was about, but the woman said, the speaker said, um, that they were finding, said, said that they were finding that teenagers who were getting STDs from their partners um, were then being treated for the STD, but regularly thought that the partner was not having sex with anyone else. So they didn't realize they were at risk. Specifically, the talk was about um, managing STDs and STIs. But um, after the initial finding out of the affair, and in the worst possible way through contracting a disease, um, or an infection, then the people, it showed that more than 80% of the, of the teenagers got back together with the partner. Well, shockingly, this entire room of sex educators, researchers, and therapists lets out this giant sigh. And the person speaking says, no, we should not be disappointed that teenagers want to work on their relationships. And It was almost enlightening for everyone in the room, I'm sure, but definitely for me to realize that why am I advocating for leaving someone for having an affair, for not being able to communicate because they didn't have the language or they didn't feel enough self-respect. And and really, I tend to feel it's self-respect to be known honestly to their partner. And that reaches this whole other level, right? And it is that I do believe that having an affair or um, cheating on a partner says much more about us and our inability to um, 
kind of destroy the inside part of us that is shameful and that does not want us to have the things that we want and to renegotiate boundaries inside of our relationships to find new forms of happiness. So I want to say potentially that many of our partners would be completely okay with talking about the things that we want and exploring those things in a certain way that felt safe. What definitely does not feel safe is being um, disrespected, is being made to look stupid or unimportant or uncared for, um, being deceived. That will never feel okay for someone. Lastly, I do want to say that having an affair essentially is just a non-consensual action. So instead of thinking of affairs as disrespectful, we should think of them as non-consensual. A huge part of consent is knowing the situation you're in and who you're sleeping with and under which pretense. Negotiating boundaries and expectations is a huge part of basically every single one of my podcasts, but definitely of all of our relationships. And when you negate all of that and make a decision for your partner without them by engaging in a relationship, bringing them into a metamor relationship with someone else, you are engaging in non-consensual sex with your first anchor partner. So keep that in mind. In the upcoming weeks, I will have a podcast available on um, cheating, on fetishes related to affairs and cheating and the ways that our brain actually um, absorbs it as differently and our relationships differently in terms of trauma bonding, in terms of attachment, when we are having a relationship that is secret and therefore has to be protected by us and ways that those emotions are kind of inflated um, based on those attachment styles. So I hope you follow me there soon and thanks for listening. (music) 